30th. Um, the town administrator and I will finalize my budget recommendations um, about December 4th. We have to plan uh, time to get the budget books out to print. And so the budget books, including the recommendations of the town administrator, will be ready and available and distributed on December 15th. I put that date in bold because it's a date that's casting concrete, and all the other dates are relatively flexible between the date that the budgets were handed out and the date that the budgets are due back to the board slapping book. I've also um, worked out with the finance director calendar because we have a Veterans Day holiday in there, we have a Thanksgiving holiday in there, we have a couple of holidays that cause us some, some headaches, so what we've done is we've worked out around those holidays and, and tried to come up with a with a plan. So that's the uh, the internal part of the, the administration part of the budget process. And then once the, uh, the holidays end, I have suggested to the board on January 6th, which is a Saturday, um, you begin your budget hearings. And the format be similar to, to the format that was followed last year, where the um, large departments come in and um, at a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee make their budget presentations as part of that discussion. The smaller departments would then be invited in on Monday, January 8th, and they would present their, their budgets to you at that meeting. Uh, the Board would have an opportunity at its meetings on uh, uh, January 22nd and January 29th to conduct your budget deliberations and then ultimately to, to vote on your recommendations and submit them to the Finance Committee by the end of January. Um, the date that I've shown for the annual town meeting merely represents what's in the charter. As you know, the board has to uh, conduct a public meeting, public hearing in January to uh, determine the actual date of the meeting. So that, that's the calendar that I put together. You welcome any, any of your thoughts or questions at this time. Uh, Craig, just a couple of things. One is, uh, I think the April town meeting based on past practice will be moved ahead one week. Second is uh, at our finance team meeting on Friday, we did review the schedule of the school board and they presented their schedule, which uh, I, can, I can read off the, the key dates uh, if we want uh, copies of it. But the uh, school committee on September 7th completed their budget goals October, uh, school principals and department heads formulate budget requests. Superintendent develops personal recommendations. So that's underway just about complete. November 9th is the preliminary expense budgets and payroll recommendations are due to the business manager. On the 21st, rough draft of the budget distributed to the school committee. November 27th, the school committee has a budget workshop. January 22nd, the school committee will vote on the FY07 preliminary budget. February will be devoted to a budget workshop, public meetings, and joint meetings with the Finance Committee and Selectmen. February 12th, the school committee votes uh, to recommend the budget. And on March 12th, they'll be holding their public hearing. And they were anticipating town meeting being the second day. I think when we looked at this, this schedule went out as a pretty close from the point of view of getting uh, a preliminary budget, uh, uh, getting to the point where there's a preliminary budget. And after that, it's all a matter of what goes on at the State House and what we anticipate, how much risk we're going to take with our uh, receipts. If anyone wants a copy of this, uh, I'll leave it. Well, I just gave you my copy. You did? So you can make copies. Okay. Thank you. All right. Go on, great. Um, that's it on, on the calendar. What I what I want to do is, if you don't have any questions about the calendar, I'd like to talk a bit about the three-year budget forecast, which is a related item, but it's it's a bit different than the calendar. Is the calendar acceptable to the, to the board? Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. I said I wasn't going to say anything. I just said sure. <laughs> All right. If you want to. Um, uh, the information that was provided tonight, the yellow page, um, three-year budget forecast explanations and key assumptions. What I'd like to do is uh, just update the, uh, the three-year budget forecast. Um, there had been some discussion, as you know, going back to the uh, to the summer months about 
put it together a three-year budget forecast. <coughs> and the, um, I'm just going to go through the bullets here because I think they're important to bring out publicly. Um, the purpose of the budget forecast is to serve as an early warning system that estimates whether a gap exists between revenues and expenditures for the next fiscal year, next three fiscal years, and to begin the process of reviewing policy choices to balance, to balance the budget in those future years. So what we really want to do is go together and, and develop some estimates based upon what we think our budgets are going to look like for the next three years, and then also make some assumptions in terms of what we will have available for revenues to meet those budgetary costs in the next three years. Our second point is the uh, Department of Revenue um, strongly recommends cities and towns um, undertake uh, multi-year budget forecasts. If you go on your website, you'll see that they dedicate uh, quite a bit to this in their uh, best practices section. And the Department of Revenue generally feels that budget forecasts should be limited to a three to five year window to provide the highest degree of accuracy. Um, in this particular case, we'd be looking at the period from July 1st of 2007 through June 30th, 2010, and those are the years that are covered by the, uh, the budget forecast. Um, the, the budget forecast, the third point, prevents, presents revenue and expenditure information at a summary level. Presenting this information at a summary level makes it easier to understand and also helps distinguish it from the operating budget that is provided in considerably greater detail. So the intent at this point is what I would call to take the 10,000 foot view on the budget and, and not become bogged down in the, uh, the minutia of uh, cost of individual services, nor is there an attempt here to forecast or project the number of new employees that we need to add and new services that maybe we need to add more in the future. The intent is really identify what we feel, um, based upon the current <coughs> level of services, that carry forward where we'll be in the next three years. The next point is a moderately conservative approach has been taken in estimating available revenues, and these are based primarily on historical review of information that affects the town of North Reading. Um, I've made a number of assumptions with the finance director about dollars and percentage adjustments to the current fiscal year's revenues in order to arrive at estimates for the first year of the forecast. The same analysis was used for the second and third year of the forecast. So what we've done is we've used fiscal year 2007 as our base. What we've done is we've made some assumptions projected forward, and that's how we derived our costs. I would note that a specific assumption used in developing the budget forecast will be reviewed separately. The last point under explanations, our budget expenditures for the three-year period are based on a maintenance or level services budget. New services and programs are not contemplated for the forecasted period. All expenditures were adjusted across the board by a specific percentage increase consistent with our view of the historical budget information. What that means is that we've established a uh, overall percentage that we think budgets will go up. Within that percentage, certain departments will go up at a higher rate. Others will go down. Others will be remain but relatively stable. And that's been the trend of the town for a number of years, and it's no different than any other cities in town. But overall, we've been able to establish an average. If you look at the assumptions, the total budget expenditures, number one, um, as part of the projection, we're forecasting an increase by 5%. Um, this percentage is consistent with expenditure data for the past five years that shows the general fund increase, which has been slightly over 5% annually. And this 5% increase excludes any capital or enterprise fund account. So it would exclude Hillview and it would exclude the water department. But generally, all other departments <coughs> and all of the operating budget expenditures that fit pretty neatly within this 5% total. And again, individual departments, in many instances, didn't see a 5% increase. But in fact, if you look at the cost of all of our services, the overall increase for each of those years was about 5%. And that would also include the schools. 
Number two, fixed costs uh, will continue to increase at a rate that is consistent with the past five years. To note, health insurance costs on average have increased about 16% annually during this period. And pension and retirement costs have increased by about 20% during the same period of time. Um, under the aforementioned scenario, uh, fixed costs <coughs> will likely continue their drain away from other municipal services and programs. I think I mentioned to you, and keep in mind that the overall budget is going up by 5%, but when you have certain items going up 16 to 20%, the net effect of that is that those dollars have to come from somewhere, and they're generally taken from other department services and programs. Number three, state aid in the forecast is um, projected to grow by 2% annually during the forecasted period. It should be noted that the SBAB reimbursements are shown to decrease by about $302,000 beginning in fiscal year 2009. And if you look at the sheets, the, the detail sheets that I'll get into after this, that's the really the only change that's on the sheets that you see today versus the sheets that were in your packet over the weekend as the town's gone ahead rather than strictly looking at level um, receipts on school business, I mean, school building assistance, we've in fact noted that um, the there will be a decrease in payments, which means ultimately the town will have fewer dollars available to it. Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure that that maps directly, because uh, if school business assistance is going away, it implies that we possibly retiring some exempt debt. Follow what I'm saying? Um, I believe these payments are at the end of the debt cycle, which means that they're probably, there is a gain, a gain to the town. So these would be after the debt has been paid down. There is typically in the beginning of the project, the town is forced to pay higher costs with temporary interest and such. And as you reach the end of the SBA payment cycle, there's a period of a few years where you have those dollars available, but your debt service has been paid off. That's that's my understanding. What we will I thought that the business assistance payments matched the total of the the bond. In other words, let's say, let's say that it was five or six years before it kicked in. Then they would pay a proportional amount that would result in the pay down at the end of the, the bonding cycle. Now, if that's not the case, then you may be right. We'll have, we, we can take a, we'll have to take a closer look at that. But just keep in mind that the change um, that would be about three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred two thousand. One of the uh, things that uh, I think we need to do when we look at this from a summary point of view is that we have levy limit, meaning everything that fits within the levy limit. And we have a bunch of things which are debt overruns that we ought to be able to look at in two pieces. Because the debt override and the imp impact of that is a tax rate issue that uh, is a function of how, how the uh, whether these payments uh, fall off and when these new ones come in. And, and I think it would be helpful to look at that as a separate piece. Okay. So let me just um, quickly go through the rest of the assumptions in Again, I think it's important to state what they are for credibility's sake. When you're putting together a forecast like this, it's always important to state what your assumptions are and to do so in this type of manner. So I, I apologize for belaboring the point, but I think it's important. Um, the, the forecast, um, of course, shows the uh, tax revenues will increase as allowed by uh, state law. Uh, one of the calculations that goes into the amount of tax revenue that the town has 